There we go. <clears throat> nice little shallow shelf over there. Got it right on the edge of it. Popped it as soon as it hit the water. It's a nice fish. Nice brownie. Hit the size 14. Just natural waltz. Real pretty fish. Just tons of bugs in the air. Just Caddis and Hendrickson's and just a smorgasbord out here. Nice, nice brownie, nice brownie. Good solid 15 incher. Yeah. Beautiful fish, just a beauty. <clears throat> Boy, he might be 16 actually. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. 15, 16 inch fish right there. So I'm out in, uh, so I'm out in central Pennsylvania fishing uh, one of my favorite places. Uh, it's mid April. I don't know if you can see this downstream. It is just a swarm of bugs. It's Hendrickson's and granums and they're just everywhere. And uh, there's no risers. Um, I've been fishing, uh, it's, uh, it's about 9.15. I've been fishing about an hour or so and I've been starting to peck at them. Uh, <clears throat> there's a nice shelf right over there, pretty shallow and then it drops off into this nice trough. I actually caught one here a moment ago, right in front of me on this side. And then I was just on that edge right there, made a nice upstream cast, was tight to it right away and he nailed it. It's a nice fish. Let's see if we can keep at it. Boy, there are just, <clears throat> now there's more caddis than anything. Just swarms of them. It's <clears throat> a nice shelf right over there. It's about 25 feet away. That's the bottom. This whole, this whole side, there's this just nice, this nice trough here on the right. Back away, there's an edge right here. There's a kind of a rock cropping right here and then it dumps off. So I'm just gonna back off of it and fish this edge first. bottom of fish right there. There we go. There's a the fish. Just <clears throat> so I just backed off that edge, swung around here, got into position. First cast, I'm pretty sure that was a hit and then made another cast, replicated that drift and got this nice brown. Oh <laughs> it just popped out of the net. Half in and half out on that. <clears throat> that was on a uh, same bug as last time, a size 14 natural waltz. Really sunny. It's, um, the water's clear, but it's got that nice limestone green color to it. But, you know, I usually go to a generic looking bug when we have sunny days like this and a waltz really Serves me well. There's a rock here, some depth in front of it and to the left. It's a little bit slower water right there. <clears throat> Let's get on the other side of it.
There we go. Boy, that was a nice cider jump. Made that upstream cast and cider just shot right upstream really as soon as the as soon as my bugs hit the water. It came on the waltz again. I'll tell you where that fish was here. In a second here, let me get him released. Cute little guy. So right over here, there's a shallow shelf and there's a rock up there and there's a little deep trough here, but there's some slack water right behind there, right where that shelf runs into that slack water. It was right there, tucked up right at that end of the V, I would call it. And that was probably a 25 foot cast. I was tight to the cider right away. And that, that, the bugs didn't drift six inches and the cider just shot right upstream. some nice nice water right in through there that's just a nice run We had some nice drifts in there. Let's pop it over here on the other side here. The tuck. There we go. <clears throat> Feels like a good fish. Yeah, nice fish. Just right in that, right on the left edge of that slack water, right behind that rock. Just had a nice tuck cast. Kind of got vertical right away and he popped it. Not too far in the drift. You're hitting that bottom fly. Boy, that's, a, that's another beauty right there. That is a solid fish right there. A solid brownie. That's another 16 inch fish maybe. Yeah, pretty darn close to 16. Thank you there, buddy. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Beauty. Just a beauty. So you can see that rock right there. And you can see that slow eddy behind it. You've got this fast water. It was just on the left edge of that eddy right there. And I made a nice tuck. Got almost vertical right away. That's about 25 feet away. But I held my rod up and I got vertical and he popped it right away. Just a little twitch in the cider. Good stuff. Look how beautiful this creek is. Just what a gorgeous day too. <clears throat> I can't pop another one out of here. There we go. 
There we go. Same spot. Same type of drift. It was a little bit longer there. He was below that last fish, but just made a really nice cast popped off. Made a really nice cast. Got tight to it right away. Got a nice vertical sighter in there. And that's like, a that's probably 25 feet away. That, that was pretty cool. Okay, I just moved up a little. You can see the slack water here to the left. There's a bubble line here in the middle, and then you got some rolling water over there. But this this all looks really good. Let me work this on the left back to me. Let's get it right on the edge of that bubble line. rolling water now there we go everything's on that waltz He's colored up. He's a gorgeous fish right there. Nice solid brownie. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Got a granum crawling in my net. So I worked this slack water to the left of me, took it down this bubble line, had some nice drifts, but then I got it into that rolling water, probably, you know, once again, 25 feet away, making upstream cast, and he nailed it right away. That's probably knee deep water in there, probably two feet or so. felt good about that that was just a great area nice fish you see that rolling water there's a shelf there it drops off right there just i had it just perfectly vertical going through there and he whacked it it's a nice fish boy he's a beauty oh nice Another waltz eater. Nice fish. Good 14 inches. I love those sparse spots. They're so cool. Boy, he is a chunk. Chunk brownie. Boy, what a beautiful fish. Good looking brownie. Nice orange tail. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. So you can see this kind of rolling water. It's a shallow shelf right there and right about there. It just drops off, gets a little green. You can see that rock. I had it vertical going through there. It's probably about 20 feet out and he whacked it. Just as soon as I made that cast, I was getting ready to say, boy, that looks good, and he nailed it. These caddis are all over the place. They're banging into me, hitting my cider. Pretty amazing. There we go. 
Boy, I had to get right on the bottom there. I thought that was a brookie. <laughs> nice. Nice brookie out of that trough. I thought that was a brookie. It's a nice little surprise. Love getting those guys out here. You can see this fallen tree here, really shallow in front of me, and there's just this trough right here. I had made probably five casts or so, and I just couldn't get a good drift because the wind, and the wind died down a little bit, and I got a nice vertical sighter, and he hit right in front of me, right when I was perfectly vertical. I'm not getting a good drift to the wind, so I'm gonna get a little bit heavier bug on. I had a uh, 2.8 bead on, now I'm gonna go to a 3.3. <laughs> I don't know if you saw what I did. I think it's another little brookie. I don't know what you saw I did. I reached my rod and I really extended that drift and hit it right at the end. Another little brookie. No, it's a little brownie. They count too. Really difficult to get a good drift in here because I got an upstream wind. <laughs> but... I know there's got to be another fish in there, but I extended that drift and he hit way down there. I'm definitely getting a better drift with the uh, heavier bead on. Still a walk. That's a good drift. There we go. There we go. Uh oh. Good fish, too. Decent fish. I got vertical right away. That's a nice fish. I think he hit the dropper. Yeah. Got a uh, size 18 olive flash paragon on her dropper. Nice chunk. Saw a 14 incher. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Good looking fish. So let me tell you how I got that fish. So <laughs> I've been fishing this, as you saw, with a 2A bead have an upstream wind so I went to a heavier bead and I just kind of repositioned myself <clears throat> and even though I caught him on the dropper I would just made a I just kind of took another step up made a nice tuck cast and I got vertical right away and he hit kind of right there and really nice fish and that just shows you I mean I don't know how many casts I made in here but I just wasn't getting great drifts and I just kept kind of tweaking my position and tweaking my tuck cast and i really got it down nicely and he hit right in there this is just a good looking run here i have a real short piece of tippet on too this is um 
I probably have <clears throat> three and a half feet to the bottom fly. So I'm, I'm getting my cider very close to the water. And really, these every hit today, really except maybe two, have been just very subtle cider cider movements. Uh, I had a couple, you know, where the cider jumped up, but they were in shallower water down there. But uh, that was a really nice fish. I worked hard for that guy right there. There we go. <clears throat> I saw that fish rise. And I just had too much weight on, so I just cut my dropper off and first cast, nailed him. Just every drift I kept bouncing on the bottom, just trying to compensate for the wind here. And, um, you know, I was able just to make that little micro adjustment. Pop this nice brownie. It's just a good looking area here. It's got this nice shallow riffle. There's a bit of a trough, there's another riser right there. But I saw this fish, you see this flat rock right here. I saw this fish rise right off of it, but <clears throat> I made a cast and it just started hitting bottom right away. So I just cut my dropper off, made one cast and just really got the perfect drift in there and nailed him. There's a fish right over here, it keeps rising. I lightened up my weights, Let's see if I can pop him. Oh, that's a nice fish too. Oh, whacked it. <clears throat> I put a dry dropper on here. I'm seeing some risers. It's really shallow water and I'm just I think I can work a lot better with a dry dropper. Just really stalling that drift out right there. Oh God, that was a nice fish. He came up for the dry, son of a gun. Mm. <clears throat> God, that was a perfect rise. That's a nice fish too. I didn't sting him. Maybe I can pop him again. got that fish boy did I work for that fish <laughs> he hit the dropper a pink beaded waltz on I don't think that was that that's a smaller fish but still exciting <laughs> yeah he's not that other one that went for the dry but I worked hard for it. Pink beaded waltz and the kisser. Thank you there, little buddy. Kind of buggered up. You can see that there's a rock right there. He was just in that, there's a little bitty shoot right there. That bigger fish was in the slack water just behind that rock, but that guy was in the shoot. But that was, that was exciting. I, I thought I had that big one. <laughs> that was cool though just change, changing tactics I just you know I was throwing nymphs up in there and it just wasn't working for me it's really shallow in here there's not a bunch of risers but I do see fish coming up every now and then it just and I can just work this water a little bit better with a dry dropper and stall my drift out a little bit more 
Good grief, I don't know how many casts I made over there and finally got them to hit. Try a couple more casts of that bigger one there. And then I'm gonna move on. I haven't seen that guy rise since he went up from a fly last time though. Let's let's move on up here a little bit more. <clears throat> Just saw a fish come up right here. Two of them. There we go, got the dry. I got a uh, Granum corn fed caddis on. Love it when they hit that dry. Super, super skinny water. Man, that is, that's a barely a foot deep. A nice chunk. This super skinny water like this, you either have to have a single two, three bead on if you're nymphing, or even a two, or do a dry dropper like I did right here. And definitely work for this nice chunk here. Thank you there, buddy. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Appreciate it. You can see this eddy right here. I actually saw two fish rise and I made a just a really nice cast and he popped that corn fed caddis. That's pretty sweet. You know, once again, it's just that you got this super skinny water. I'm standing in knee deep water. That wasn't a foot of water there. And those fish, that, well, that one riser right there that I missed, <clears throat> that's a foot of water and that one over there too. So really cool that they're up in this skinny water like this. There we go. Oh yeah. That is 12 inches of water up there. It's a nice fish. <clears throat> My caddis got all buggered up, so I just cut it off and I got a single two, three bead, size 18 waltz, upstream cast in that skinny water and he nailed it. Now, it was on that edge and he shot out of the faster water there. It's a nice fish. Boy, that's an overlooked spot right there. I can tell you that much right now. That was, that was pretty awesome right there. Good looking fish too. Good looking brownie. Thank you there, buddy. That is a that is a chunk right there. Boy, he's a beauty. Absolute beauty. Boy, that is a chunk right there. Look at that guy. Size 18 waltz in the kisser. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Thank you there, buddy. Boy, now that is a perfect example that is an overlooked spot right there. Most people would just walk on by. As a matter of fact, this water I'm standing in, people are just gonna walk right by. So I'd pick that one up right here on the dry. And then when I was taking the uh, hook out, the fly got all buggered up. So I just cut it off. And I just have a single size 18, 2.3 bead waltz. And I took it right down that edge and that fish shot out of that it was right on the edge and it shot out of that fast water and nailed it. It was pretty cool. I actually saw it just dart out. That's your beauty about this microliter. You can just, just 
such a lightly weighted bug and still be so deadly accurate. Yeah, usually, usually water like that, a decent sized fish, he's gonna be by himself. That was pretty cool. Let's walk up here, I'm gonna show you that spot. You know, this is mid-April once again, and so many bugs are popping. I don't know what the water temperature is, but I mean, I know it's I know it's great. But let's just walk up here. I'm going to show you that fish is, or fish was, I should say. And <clears throat> you're not going to overlook these spots when when you're fishing this time of year. So right now, I'm standing. It's shin deep water, shin deep water, and this fish was right here. And I had my bug going right down the edge, and I just saw it was probably a foot inside the faster water, and it just shot over and nailed it. And that was pretty cool. I'm going to fish this shallow water with a single bead, and then I'm going to go to the bank, have a sandwich, and work that water up there. All right, I put a uh, <clears throat> put a dry dropper back on. I got a uh, high and dry hairs ear on. I just saw a riser behind me. There we go. <clears throat> Hit the dropper right in front of that rock. right in front of that rock he was laying where well, dry just just it looked like it just sunk so that size 18 waltz pink bead this is fun getting them like this this is fun Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Appreciate it, buddy. So, <clears throat> you see this little eddy here. There's a rock right there. It's a little bit of a slow area, and he was tucked right in front of that rock. Trees above me. Hit the, uh, it's got a single two, three, size 18 pink beaded waltz on still. It's a decent fish. Just over in that skinny run over there. Just shows you, you just don't always have to have a lot of weight on. A lot of people think you always got to have tons of weight on to get your flies down, and that's just not the case. Just a good tuck cast, lighter tippet, you can get really light bugs down, and that's fairly quick water. And that's probably, I say it's skinny, I mean, that's two feet deep. And this is a nice fish right here. That's a solid chunk brownie right there. Good looking brownie right there. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Just a size 18 pink beaded waltz 2-3 bead. And that water right there I was making my cast probably up here. It's probably a foot and a half there, probably two feet there, rolling water, but I made a nice, nice tuck cast and I had a vertical cider going through there. And once again, this is a two, three bead. You just don't need a ton of weight. You've got to, I say it all the time, it's so important to manage your weight. You know, and I just had the perfect drift going on there. There's, the wind died down and 
fish in this water right here. It's just perfect with a little, little single bug light bead. It's a nice brownie right there. So once again here, I'm gonna make a nice tuck cast and you get a vertical sighter right there with a two, three bead. Just this really great looking drift in there. I just changed bead sizes, that wind kicked up. I still have a single fly on, but I put a uh, 3.0 bead on. Oh. There we go. He hit twice. <laughs> the jumper. He's a jumper, little guy. Yeah, Mr. Brown. So you can see this eddy right here, and then you got that shoot of fast water. I had made a couple casts, and I just, it was very, you know, obviously it's quick water. I couldn't get ahead of my cider. I actually made really poor casts. Then I made a good one, had a hit, made another cast or two, and then I, you know, I replicated that drift and I was able to nail that fish. That is, uh, I'm gonna say it, you're gonna get sick of hearing me say it, but it's so crucial to get tight to your cider <clears throat> because when you're fishing skinny fast water like this, the hits come really quick and you gotta be ahead of your cider. Caddis are just rolling upstream again. And that fish was all about managing weight because I had that two, three bead on, but this upstream wind came. And even though it's skinny water, I had to beat up because it was actually uh, pushing my leader upstream. So as soon as I changed that bead, I started getting better drifts. I went back to a single 2-3 bead, got a uh, olive flash paradigm on, size 18. Any water, little guy. Get here, buddy. Just working this real skinny water here. I saw a couple noses pop up. I think I can pop a, another one out of here. Upstream cast just working right back to me. Have a nice bow in the cider. That's a beauty when you're fishing these uh, real light bugs. You just have this really gorgeous bow in the cider and you can just pick up everything. in that tail out here almost. That's a brookie. I thought that was a brookie. Good looking fish. Boy, he's a big old fatty. Look at that gorgeous little brook trout. Big old belly. Thank you there, Mr. Brookie. <clears throat> All right. Let's to pop another one. fish. There we go. That's a nice fish right there. Oh, I love this. 
love it when they get in this skinny water. They are just aggressive. You get a good drift. And you've got a really good chance of getting a fish when they're in this skinny water like this. There we go. Nice fish. Nice chunk. Nice chunk. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Got a grand on me to boot. Nice 14 incher. Thank you there, buddy. So once again, I'm just, well, I caught two right here kind of in the tail out, but you see that flat rock and there's another rock there and he, there's a little bit of a kind of a shoot and he was right in the front of there. I actually saw him nosing. I knew that fish was there because I saw him, but uh, made a couple good drifts and then that last one, it was just perfect and he nailed it. My hook got a little jacked up there and I switched bugs. Got a size 16 Jack Daniels on. There we go. There we go. Saw that fish nose up too, right in front of me. It's 15 feet in front of me. That's the beauty about fishing upstream. These fish, especially in this riff of water like this these fish have no idea i'm here i'm just staying ahead of my bugs and have a nice bow in the cider and it's a good looking fish it's another solid 14 incher where they are they have their feed bags on today that is a gorgeous gorgeous brownie boy he is colored up Good looking fish. That is a that is a picture perfect looking brown trout right there. Jack Daniels corner pocket. Look at that guy. That is a good looking brownie. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Thank you there, buddy. Got him on a size 16 Jack Daniels. That's a that's a bug I came up with. That is a good good bug. I love using that bug on these clear water sunny days. That and a waltz worm. Just great sunny day bugs. My rod tip is right here. This is an 11 foot nine inch Thomas and Thomas. So call it 12, that fish was, it hit 13 feet in front of me right here. And that's the beauty about, if I'm fishing this way, if I'm making these up and across drifts, which a lot of people do, these fish are gone. You're not gonna catch them. You have to fish this skinny water straight upstream back to you. You gotta stay beneath the fish. These fish keep, Nose in right in front of me. They have no idea I'm here. Got a big upstream wind now. I'm going to lean into it. Nice fish, real nice fish. Now, how many casts did I make there? And I just took a couple steps upstream, repositioned myself, and got a really nice drift. I believe he hit the Jack Daniels on the dropper. Ah, nice brownie. Nice 
Nice brownie. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. Good looking brown. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. <laughs> so I was right down here a moment ago and I was making upstream cast because of that wind. And I knew I could, you know, I was really just trying to stay tight to my cider because of the wind, but it calmed down a little. I just moved around here and I got a much better drift in there and he nailed it just about 20 feet out there. It's a little slow spot and he hit it right at the end of there. There we go. That was awesome. <laughs> Got it on the, really wasn't the swing, it was kind of the rise. I just dunked my cider. And it started rising up from the bottom and he, he hit it. This is a real deep pool here. That's pretty cool, hit the dropper. Size uh, 16 Jack Daniels. Thank you there buddy, he's a fatty. Thank you there, buddy. So what I did there is we have this real deep trough right here and I was vertical and then I just dipped my cider and I really reached out and then my bug started swinging up like that and he nailed it. Clearly it was off the bottom because he hit my dropper. And my dropper is probably 24 inches above my <coughs> bottom fly. Nice. Boy, I don't know if you saw that cider twitch on camera. That was awesome. This is just a beautiful, beautiful area right here. Just this, these two channels coming together. Just a great area. Nice brownie. Thank you there, buddy. 13 incher just probably splashed the camera got on a size 14 waltz thank you there mr brown the sun's finally going behind some clouds it's so it was so hot today really just unseasonably warm for april soon mid 80s today oh nice fish nice fish <clears throat> cut my dropper off and I went single fly. Oh God. Ah, just gotta get in a spot here I can fight him. This is a real nice fish. Love it when they get in that skinny water, big fish like this. Look at this guy, he's awesome. Just dogging me like nice brownies do in the deep water. Well, he is pretty.
He is a pretty fish. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. What a beautiful fish. It's a stud. Look at that guy, all leopard up. Beautiful brownie. Thank you there, buddy. Yeah, there, Mr. Brown. Single waltz, size 14 natural. So it was over there. It's a lot sh more shallow over there. Just saw riser. It's a lot more shallow over there. I made a couple casts and my bugs uh, hit bottom too quick. So I cut the dropper off, went single fly, 3 0 bead, and he popped it. That was pretty sweet right there. Well, I've had a heck of a day. So I'm gonna be calling it quits here in central Pennsylvania. Boy, what a day I had. Uh, just really had great luck all day long. Caught some really nice brownies. I think I ended up catching about five brookies or so, which was a real treat. Uh, you know, they're a nice surprise out here. Um, you know, the, uh, the, just, uh, the name of the game today was just being versatile. I mean, I caught fish double nymphing. I caught them on dry dropper. Uh, I went to a single light fly in the real skinny water. Um, you know, just, uh, they were really spread out uh, all over today. And, uh, you know, you just had to adapt as you moved up the stream. When you went from deeper to shallower, you just had to keep adjusting weight. And, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, in that real skinny water, I was using a 2-3 bead with um, a size 18 walt. So uh, just a really great day. And uh, so when you're out there on the stream, you know, you just got to pay attention to your weight and manage your weight. Uh, you know, it, a lot of people, they always put that heavy fly on the bottom, come hell or high water, no matter what type of water they're encountering they always have that heavy fly on so sometimes you need to lighten up and uh, when you do that especially if you're fishing a micro leader uh, you're going to see it cast wonderfully and uh, you're just going to get more fish in that skinny water i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below happy to help you out if you liked it i appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and as always tight lines everybody i'll talk to you later